Hello everyone, welcome to my review of Sniper Elite 3, now this is on the PlayStation 4. So here we have the start menu. In single player we have 8 campaigns to go through. Uh, some are pretty short, but you actually gain rank in this one, and the higher rank you get, you unlock achievements and extra weapon attachments. So here are the 4 sniper rifles you have to choose from. Uh, my favorite, of course, is the Lee Enfield. And that's the one I namely use. Now you can customize it with the the add-ons you get for the higher ranks you are. As right now, I've only unlocked the improved barrel, but this is a nice feature. I like it because it makes a good gun even better. Or if you like the other guns and you want them to be more on par with some of the the better ones, you can hit up the stats and then it will change the stats for you so dropping a scope wobble with recoil you know stuff like that so there is a trade-off though there has to be some kind of balance so our secondary weapon you got between the uh, Panzer Shrek Thompson MP40 and our pistols we have the Luger and the Mark IV and then we have you're able to hold up to two bandages, two med kits, and two side deals like uh, either uh, mines, trip mines, or at the bottom there that was a very high powered round. No, eliminate vehicles faster. Now you can change the difficulties. Now not only does this make the enemies harder to, to kill, but it also makes the routines uh, more accurate. And then it also Collins takes away some of the helping stuff like the uh, red dot for wind and, and drop. And actually the easiest setting eliminates wind and droppage so that wherever the crosshair lineup is where you'll hit every time. But if you want to be all real sniper, go all the way to the bottom and do the hardest mode. And that will take away any advantages. And so you actually have to calculate wind speed and drop based on the surroundings like wind dust dust being floated around now as you can see the ps4 is really showing its metal as you can see that it's just rendering the scenes i'm not sure if it's because the, the map's actually loading in now but it's not a good sign for a next gen system like as you can see in this scene the characters are really blurred out it almost looks like playstation 2 graphics and then finally once it gets time to render completely then you get that really nice PS4 next gen effect um, I haven't played it on the PC yet but I'm pretty sure if I ran it on ultra settings that one compared to this one it'd be a, a no-brainer the PC one would be the best looking one I have noticed some dips in the PS4 so Hopefully there's something that comes out to fix that. Now, in your stances, you have three different stances. You stand straight up, crouch, or low crawl. Now, the low crawl is good to get around some areas, but the crouch is the main one you want to do. Because if you r stand straight up and run, or you sprint and run, your heartbeat goes all crazy-like, and uh, it's harder to aim, and you won't be able to hold your breath. Now as you see we've got uh, two secondary uh, things in there. we got the rock throw to get the attention of enemies or make them go wherever the sound is. And then we got this one right here where we actually, you'll start a fire. Now this works good with like dynamite if you place dynamite someplace. You can start a fire right next to it. And the fire takes a minute to really get going as you see there. And that's nice because it's like a time delay so it lets you get out of the area before it explodes. As you saw there, that was a stealth takedown. You can do this if you get sneak up onto people. Um, and then here's a collectible. There's a couple of these around through the map. There's some sniper hideouts. And usually, in the distance from a sniper hideout is a guy that's really far off. And it's called a long shot to take him out. After you get those, you get a certain trophy for completing them. But right now, I'm going to set a trap for this guy. I already put the... Uh, 
the trap in the ground. Basically, this one, the guy would walk over it, and it would shoot up out of the ground and explode, killing him. Now he's he's got that yellow above his head, which means he's uh he's curious about me. And when the red starts filling up, that means he is like he knows that I'm an enemy, and now he's alerted and he'll alert his buddies. Now this time around, they did a lot of attention to detail, uh, especially with the the kill cams, as you'll see in this shot here. So I am doing the medium saying, so it does have that red reticle that shows for uh, wind and uh, drop. As you can see, the leaves are falling to the left there, so that shows that the wind is blowing to the left, so your shot needs to be a little right to hit the target. So here we go, here's the penetration. Just messes the guy's face up. Now this does it a lot. And one of the iconic things from Sniper Elite V2 Pretty sure you can see where I'm aiming there. It is the oh, oh, oh. testicle shot, and then it has an added effect of crippling his legs, as you saw there. Just the force of the bullet penetrating his body just crippled his legs inward. Now, this does have sections where you'll have stuff like a, a truck backfiring or something else in the background making a sound and they'll display in the top middle of the screen and if you shoot within that sound alertness you cannot be heard like right now now there's a bunch of areas for your your shots to hit in this one you can do the the headshot um, you can shoot them in the arm and it'll actually show the bullet go in and break their arm you can shoot them in the heart, lungs, kidneys, testicles, and head. Or you can break their arm or legs. So those are the main parts of it. Now the worlds are pretty wide open. There's a bunch of different branching paths, but it's still kind of concealed. So you still are on a linear base. It's just a bigger linear base. Kind of like, a, uh, like Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. It's a big area to play in but it's still a linear to where you could only go one place really at the end of it <laughs> so here we are we're destroying a vehicle uh, some of the vehicles you can destroy are the trucks you see there uh, tanks and that's about it now in this story we're hunting a general now this guy is the heart of the Africa Corps and I don't want to give anything away, but he's building a top secret weapon, and it's our job to find it and destroy it. Just like in V2 with the rocket, this one is another weapon. Now this is just comparison uh, from the shots from V2 till now, so you can see the difference in it. V2s were more kind of uh, cell shaded looking, cartoony, and these are more 3D rendered. And actually show muscle tissue and uh, stuff like that now when I first played this I noticed there was a little bit of lag in the shots like I would shoot the guy and you see the bullet still traveling but it would make the sound of it penetrating their skull and then finally the bullet would go into their skull but the next day they had a patch out the first patch they released and that pretty much fixed it as you can see here it goes in nice and clean and then breaks the whole front of their face I really like it but as far as single player goes it's about it all you're doing is finding those secret things and shooting Nazis in the face other than that there's nothing really much to it there's no real uh, main story just in each level it's just go here shoot this guy and, and you're good to go but it's still fun just to pop somebody in the face and watch their skull get splattered all over the place. And so that's the end of my review for the single player. Now let's get on to the multiplayer. They do have a uh, challenge mode which lets you do against waves of enemies and stuff like that. And in multiplayer you have uh, costumes. There's a bunch of spots at the bottom. I'm guessing those for DLC. 
Now, co-op play is where this really shines for multiplayer, but this right here, this multiplayer, the the team versus team type thing, is not very good. Basically, you got two teams, one on each side of the map, and they're separated by the middle to keep people from getting up close and personal. Now, the problem I have is hit detection. I just played this, just recorded this footage and hit detection in this mode is way off way off as you'll see you'll see that guy up there he will pop up boom the red dot was right on his head nothing so hit detection is something that needs to be worked on in multiplayer plus when you finally do kill somebody it's not a satisfying of a result you know if you played in the other games it just it's just not satisfying and you will find out that after you shoot a guy like that they still are able to kill you and nothing happens to them it gets a little frustrating this is one of those games that were made good for single player but it just doesn't work in multiplayer like there I just wasted one shot for some crazy reason and then the second shot finally killed the guy but it's not satisfying now this is from battlefield 4 now this right here is really freaking satisfying you can see the bullet penetrate you can see the blood splatter these shots are satisfying so I think the multiplayer needs to be worked on if anything that is something they need to fix in the game the single campaign is nice and the co-op makes it better but they really need to work on the multiplayer that's my main issue with it the multiplayer so I think it is a definite buy for the fun and single player but don't expect anything on multiplayer so thank you guys for watching this review Please let me know what you thought, and please, as always, like and subscribe. Have a good day, guys.